Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take the global stories that made it to our national dailies this morning. And joining me to review the papers is Professor Camilo Sani Fage. He's from the Department of Political Science by Euro University, Kanu. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. All right. So let's begin with the punch this morning. And the punch leads with food crisis may worsen as flood hits 10 states. The writers here says farmers grown as flood ravage farmlands in Sokoto, Kanu, Kebi, seven others. And another writer says SEMA seeks government help as drought dry up crops in four states. 31 states risk flooding. So, I mean, before we even came on air, you were just telling me how it's been raining in Kanu and there is no power. And we can obviously see here that it's not just rain, it's flooding. It's, it's a lot. And for farmers to say, you know, most of their farmlands are being affected, why is the government not doing something about it? In the sense that we're supposed to be building... Um, you know, silos or something to be able to store these crops. And the ones that are in the farmlands, shouldn't, shouldn't this be the point where we're looking at mechanized farming or something that can help, especially when there's an environmental hazard as such as this? Because obviously, this now affects the kind of food that we're going to get. Food crisis may just worsen. We're seeing food prices worsen because of obviously um, the price of good inflation, the price of goods and services right now. So if, if um, you know, the inflation is one thing and they're not even having the food at all because there's a food crisis, what is going to happen and how can the government help with this? Yeah, you see, food crisis uh, usually takes two forms. One, either the food is not available. Two, either the food is available, but uh, it is so expensive that uh, the ordinary person cannot uh, uh, buy it. Now, what we are having here uh, in the north is um, that we are having unusual rains. Um, like here in Kano, it is now a week that we have been having rains every day. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, the crops here are not um, used to this kind of rain, so that will affect them. And most uh, of all is that there is flood. But actually, uh, in most places, we have flood. Uh, farms have been swept away in so many places. Like uh, in Zampara, I think they said about uh, 2,700 plus uh, hectares of land have been washed away. So mm -hmm. these, these things, you know, will add up to the problem uh, in terms of uh, food insecurity. But the major thing is actually that the government has to be blamed because um, even before the rainy season, uh, you know, news had uh, said there is going to be this problem and nothing has been done by the government uh, in order to take precautionary measures. They haven't done it. And uh, the ecological funds that had been dispensed to states also are being embezzled. So we just sit down and gulp money and we are not taking any action on the issue. So this is what we are going to see. Now what we are seeing now, and probably if nothing is done, uh, with the poor crisis will worsen as punch has said. Hmm. That is quite alarming. And I mean, I feel like now is the time to start to do something about it. So whatever they need to do, it should be now because there are so many issues that we have in Nigeria. First, you're talking about electricity tariff. You're talking about fuel subsidy, so many things. And if this is now going to be another issue, I don't know what's going to happen. And I hope that another protest don't happen because of this. Now, speaking about, you know, fuel subsidy being gone, Obviously, uh, there's another headline here that says NNPC battles deepening fuel scarcity, black market booms. Um, over the weekend, I had to look for fuel for several hours and a lot of filling stations were not selling. The one I finally found that was selling was selling at about 860 Naira here in Lagos. And before now, it's been usually like 615. But now you're seeing the prices jump to 860, 900, 1000. And I can only imagine, you know, what it's like in the north or in other places where the, this commodity was already expensive. Um, so 
how do you think the NMPC should be dealing with this right now? Because if most people do not have fuels, I was coming this morning and as of six, um, before 6 a.m., most of the gas stations were filled up with queues. So people cannot even get hands on this product. How are we supposed to have, um, you know, just help with our economy if they're not sorting this out? And what do you think the, the NNPC should be doing right now? Are they supposed to try to import more fuels? Like what measures are they supposed to put in place to ensure that they combat this fuel, um, fuel scarcity? You see, here in Ganos, um, I think even yesterday I went around trying to get fuel. Uh, the cheapest I can get it here in Kano was uh, 950. Mm. And in some places it's 1,000 plus. And, um, you know, NNPC said that uh, people should not panic, that uh, there is uh, some glitch in supply. But I think this is the usual thing that they always say that uh, this thing they keep on blaming here and there. Actually, what they need to do is to take uh, action on the issue. And now they should try to nip it uh, in the bud, unless there is plan to increase the uh, in price of uh, food, which is the usual strategy that they do. They strangulate people uh, for quite a long time to that uh, now, Whenever the uh, availability of uh, fuel, at whatever rate, people will buy it. I hope this is not part of the strategy because mm. we have been hearing news that um, the cost of lending, uh, fuel lending in Nigeria is uh, 1,000 or 1,100 that we are still subsidizing and so on. I hope this is not part of the strategy. But if it is, if it is not, then what the NPC has to do is um, they have to make sure that the thing is available and how do they make it? Um, we already say they would keep on telling us that they have the problem that we are having at the moment. Okay, you don't keep reserve and say people should be patient. Pump in the reserve so that uh, at least this queue will go away and the price will stabilize. And as you are clearing this problem, you can now try to stop the reserve. And that is the purpose of having a reserve, I think. Hmm. I, I agree. Um... I don't know what they're doing and so many people even say the NNPC should be scrapped at the moment because you're not seeing um you're not seeing them take charge of certain things i don't think a nation that produces oil first should be importing fuel and when we're even importing fuel we're not seeing this fuel um there's so many things around the NNPC whereby um they had said the Port Harcourt refinery was going to start operations in August and now it's been moved again. Kaduna refinery is to start in December. We don't know if that's even going to happen. So we have about four refineries in Nigeria. Why do you think the NNPC is not taking charge? Because the reason why we have so many queues and why people cannot you know, get their hands on fuel is because we, we're not even refining our own fuel. We have to wait for imports before the distributors get them. It's a very long and tedious process. So why is the NNPC not taking charge when it comes to ensuring that this commodity, especially because we have the natural resources, this commodity is easily available to the masses? You see, it's corruption. Yeah. Uh, this is basically what is happening. Uh, corruption is what... Um, is so dense in uh, NNPC that they will not allow the refineries to work because people are making huge money out of that. And look at what they have been spending on uh, maintenance of these uh, four refineries that you have. What has been spent on them is more than enough to build fresh new refineries. After all, we also have the modular refineries. Now we have the Dangote refinery. Look at the politics around it because of corruption. This is one way, and this is the surest way in part by which uh, NNPC can get rid of this uh, problem. We have uh, our own refineries, four of them. We already have Dangote refineries. We have modular refineries here. And the president has uh, directed that they should be sailing crude to these, uh, uh, you know, refineries 
uh, a, a local currency. And yet they have not uh, to do it. All we have been hearing is this issue here and this issue, blaming game here and there. Because people benefit from the crisis. They make a lot of money. So that is why they will not allow it to happen. The only way is either an NPC to now go back to the policy that are the directives of the president and supply this to make sure that our partners work, or the president should take the bull by the horn and help head to roll in an NPC. By the time he does that, I'm sure things will be okay. If we get some of the few Uh, treated with kid gloves, they are being supported. They are being holding the nation at ransom. And mm -hmm. nothing is done. I think that is why we are where we are. Everywhere when you have challenges like this, even the less than this, you know to make people accountable. You hold people accountable. How do you hold them accountable? Is that those who are found guilty, you deal with them according to the law. Then that will now punish those who have done, and secondly, it will restore, restore what has been taken from Nigeria, and thirdly, if you take that to action, it will be preventive measures so that others will not cooperate, will not do it again. Hmm. All right, let's move over to, um, you know, another, another paper. Well, on the Vanguard, it says um, scarcity, NNPC blames distribution challenges. So that's what they're saying. Um, and the writer here says independent marketers sell at 950 naira per liter. I feel like there's a lot of blame game. Everybody's blaming each other. I'm not, it's not my fault. It's your fault, which is quite unfortunate. And I just hope that, you know, NNPC, they start to get their act right. They get their act together because we cannot be lacking in such um, commodity or in, in these products when it's something that we have a, an abundance of it. It's, it's quite unfortunate. Let's look at the daily independence. It leads with banks' recapitalization. Low purchasing power locks out retail investors from rights issue. And now, in a bid for um, to help with President Tinubu's $1 trillion economy, obviously, most of these banks have been trying to raise money um, for their banks. And you know now they have a new, um, they have to recapitalize. But looking at this, low purchasing power locks out retail investors from rights issue. Of course, in local parlance, they'll say, now, who don't chop, now go invest, right? So at this point, how can they even make sure that we are okay? Okay, and our economy is better for people to get money to start to invest. It's a question because if we are going to, if these banks have to recapitalize, then most people need to have enough money in their pockets. And for people who cannot even afford food right now, do you think they'll be looking at investing in all of these banks? How can they go about it? And how can the government ensure? Because in a way, um, it still affects the bank if people do not invest because now they are not going to be making money, so they're going to be probably out of business. So how can the government help? How can these banks ensure that they raise their capital? And how can people who even want to invest go about it? You see, guys, you cannot have, uh, invest what you don't have. Hmm. People actually, their purchasing power is very low. Uh, because of the policies that uh, the government has dished out uh, from May last year, uh, I mean, yeah, last year to date, and this has impoverished many people. And you don't expect where people are struggling to uh, you know, buy food to keep life uh, together, uh, now you expect them to invest. In fact, that is one of the things, even in the classical Keynesian economy. This is what they, they, it is saying, that if you want to turn inflation, if you want to empower this thing, now you have to empower the people so that they, uh, their purchasing power will uh, increase. And by the time they have you know, that level, they, they are able to meet their basic needs, then they will have surplus to invest in other things. So we have to see the linkage between that. That is why you see when people are talking, the government seems to, you know, lock its ear, close its ear, shut its eye, not to see what is going on, and then it's still rolling all the same policies. Unless the government 
I keep on saying this, I let the government take the bull by the horn and decide to retrace its own step on this current policy. This is where we are going to uh, go. Uh, if the people don't have uh, the, you know, the power to purchase even basic things, we don't expect them to invest. If we, they don't invest, what will happen? Other sectors will collapse, uh, like the We have to do that. We have to now rethink our own policies. We just don't close our eyes and keep on praying and begging people uh, to tighten their belt that we are going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Something has to be done if at all we are going to address this issue. This is what we are saying. Now, taxation, uh, poor, you know, uh, purchasing power of the people and other things will all ground the economy uh, to uh, a standstill. Mm. Quite unfortunate. Um, all right, so let's talk about the amounts that the senators earn. And now syrup is coming for the senators, the House of Assembly members. And here it says, alleged 21 million naira jumbo pay accounts for running costs, syrup tells a national assembly. Um, it's also on, on, a, on other papers as well, because they've been saying, how do you make so much money? How are you fixing your own salaries? Um, if the RMEFC is saying you should earn about just over a million, how are you getting 21 million naira? Even on the Vanguard here, it says, Sarah to Akpabu and Abbas disclose monthly running costs of the National Assembly. And what they're saying is this is going to help with, you know, the building the trust with the people because we need some level of accountability and transparency. Now, I know Sarah is demanding this, but shouldn't everyone be talking about this? Shouldn't every citizen be demanding for this? Because at the end of the day, it affects us. If you're going to be earning 21 million naira every month, which is about the salary, the right now, if we're going at the current uh, minimum wage, that is the salary for 300 people. So why are you getting that much money when there are still people in your constituents that can barely afford food? Shouldn't everyone be demanding for transparency and accountability from the government officials, not even not just the National Assembly members right now. So every ministry, every person who is a politician, every person who holds office right now. Yeah, you see, one, one thing that makes democracy works is where the people show interest in what is uh, in, in the governance. They, they have to uh, take part, you know, show concern on this issue. Actually, uh, you know how long it took us uh, for even the government to agree on 70,000, yeah. saying there is no money to pay that workers. And now they keep quiet on the issue of uh, their own take home. Uh, it took, uh, I think, uh, Senator Kau uh, from Kano here, when he was uh, being interviewed on BBC House of Service. He now came out and said, actually, he has been receiving 21 million Mm. every month. Now they keep on denying. So I think this is where we Nigerians should show concern. We have to show interest on this issue. Otherwise, if you leave it, this is what is going to happen. They are making such huge of money, and they refuse to rebuild it, which is one of the cardinal uh, principles of a democracy, transparency and openness. But they are hiding things they don't want anybody uh, to know. So if they are hiding it, it is at the responsibilities of the citizens to rise up and demand these things. And that is why I say kudos to Sarah. I think all other uh, CSOs should do the same thing, and uh, Nigerians also should do the same thing. Otherwise, this thing will keep on going the way it is. It is going to be business as usual. Mm -hmm. And um, what we are going to see likely is that you know the case of uh, Abdul Ningi, the case of uh, yeah. Ndimi, mm -hmm. they, they, because they blow the whistle on the assembly, they were a sort of ostracized. I think even Kao Simele is likely going to face the same thing. 
because there is a gang up that is going to be this. The uh, the assembly will take measures against yeah. anybody who is trying to uh, reveal what they are doing. But mm -hmm. I think it is for it's it's time for us Nigerians to show interest in what is happening on issues like this. Right. It seems like a little cohort that's going on there. And you're just wondering why, because you would expect that our leaders um, would have the heart of Nigerians and try to be transformational and not just go in there to enrich their own pockets. And it seems like that's what they're doing. The same people that tell you to um, believe in them and tighten your belts and don't worry, everything will be fine. Are the same people who are taking all of the monies, forgetting that they need to develop Nigeria so that everybody, you know, can be happy. Everybody can have a level playing field for each other and it's quite unfortunate and I hope that you know uh, there's something that can be done about it I hope that Nigerians can rise up to the challenge and say no we do not want this I know the end bad governance was trying to address this and hopefully it has already um, made a mark and these people know that now Nigerians are waking up and it is important that we do what is right by Nigerians all right, let's move let over. Me add, let me add one thing quickly, please. All right, sir. Um, we had a house program on this issue on BBC. Mm. And you know the irony of it? Even members are saying what they are earning now is too small. They need more hmm. out of that. Imagine. Just imagine. All right, so um, there's another story here on the Vanguard, and the Vanguard leads with it. It says, why grains importation won't happen soon by stakeholders. The writers here says, one month gone already as federal government fine-tunes policy. Customs await list of importers, um, stakeholders divided on policy, and 100 tons capacity exclude our members. And that is by, said by Rifan, Rimfan. So now, um, the government had come to say, you know what, would, in, a, in a bid to combat um, you know, the food insecurity that we have, we're going to make sure that it's okay to import and we're taking the, the import duty away for, I think, 150 days. But now, 30 days have gone by and the government is still trying to fine-tune this policy. I know that when the story um, came up, one of the questions I asked was, um, if you're saying this for 160 days, what, 150 days, what's going to happen after the 150 days? So are we going to go back to ground zero, whereby food is going to be so expensive, you probably cannot even find food because most people that even get it will want to sell it for a very high price. But uh, 30 days have gone by, and now the government is still trying to fine-tune this policy. There are certain things that they're saying, oh, we need this list of importers. Um, there's another one that says um, they're divided on the policies. It's just so much. Why do you think the government will bring up something and they're not standing by it? Because 30 days have gone by and still nothing has been done by this same policy that they've said they're introducing to help the Nigerian masses. Why do you think they always kind of like renege on what they say? Yeah. You see, one thing is, um, given what is happening now, mm. it is not question whether importation will not happen soon, but uh, it is not going to happen at all. Uh, because, as you have said, uh, it is uh, a, a six, months, uh, six months or five months that the, the window has been open for yeah. that. Now one month has, has gone, uh, which means we have barely three uh, or four, four months, months to go for the policy and yet up to now the government has not fine tuned the uh, the policy who is going to benefit who is going to uh, do this who are going to be allowed to import uh, uh the thing and secondly even the custom is yet to receive any information about it so which means unnecessary bureaucracy is being played there which by which time it will be in fact that is why you see um i'm sorry somebody interrupted it's okay please go ahead hello sir hello sir they are calling on the government yeah can you hear me now yes i can hear you now 
they are calling on the government to extend the thing beyond the six months because already we have spent one month and then the, the government is not ready with that. So I think now to the other part of your question, the government is not serious on the issue. They just put it as in for political reason uh, so that they will douse the tension and say they are going to open it. But concretely, there is nothing in terms of plan on ground that they are going to do it. Okay? So that is why up to now, they are now fine-tuning the policies. The ideal thing is before you dish out any policy, you must have done your homework, study everything, and now come out to the policy. It is not after you roll out the policy now that you start fine-tuning here and there. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and I don't know if they're going to extend. I don't even know if they're going to extend the, the date. Um, but if one month is gone already, then how are people supposed to benefit from this? How is it even going to impact the nation that is suffering? Um, I just hope that whatever you're doing, it's important that we have the right policies in place. Um, and we should always look at the root cause of the matter. We should always look at permanent fixes, not something that is temporary. And we say, oh, you know what, after a few months, um, this is what we're going to do. And then when, when the months pass, what happens next? Why are we not thinking long-term, um, long-term policies, long-term ideas, long-term measures, things that would impact Nigeria? Those are the kind of conversations we should be having. And that is the reason why we need to be appointing the right leaders, lead thoughts full leaders, leaders with great ideas that would actually transform Nigeria, not the, not the one that would, you know, just come and think of how to enrich their own pockets, and, and that's that. All right, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Thank you so much, Professor, for coming. It's always a pleasure reviewing the papers with you on Mondays. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maya Rumi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hmm. All right, so we're speaking with Professor Camille Sani Fage. He's from the Department of Political Science by Euro University. And we've just been taking the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the 1,423 and bad governance protesters that have been held without bail or legal representation. Please stay with us.